Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at a new retro gaming handheld. It's called the Odroid Go Super. We'll go over the features, unbox the unit, and then try out three different gaming systems such as Botocera, the new Recall Box, and Emulec 4.0. One thing we're not going to do in this video is perform any emulator tweaks. We're going to find out which system has the best out-of-the-box experience, hands down. Let's check it out right now. Let's take a look at the features of the Odroid Go Super. Keep in mind the bulleted points that are in yellow are the same as they were on the Odroid Go Advance. As you can see, it's not a huge technological leap from device to device. However, let's go ahead and cover them. The CPU is a Rockchip RK3326. It's a quad-core ARM 64-bit CPU at 1.3 GHz. The GPU is a Mali G31 MP2. It has 1 GB of RAM, a micro SD slot for storage, the display is a 5-inch, 854 by 480 TFT LCD display, and it looks beautiful. Less exciting is the mono speaker, however, there is a stereo earphone jack. It does have a large capacity battery at 4,000 milliamps at 3.7 volts that they claim will give you about 10 hours of playtime, but I don't know, that remains to be seen. Charging is handled through the USB-C port on the top of the device, and may take around three to four hours to completely charge the device if it's powered off. There is no Wi-Fi, but you can get an optional USB Wi-Fi adapter, which we'll take a look at in this video. So let's go ahead and open the box. I ordered this one from Ameridroid here in the US, and it only took about three days to arrive, so I was very happy about that. But not happy about the packing peanuts. I can't stand peanuts, but I do like candy, so that was nice. All right, let's get all this out of the way. There's my receipt. Nothing particularly special about the box. It's rather plain. Let's go ahead and open it. Here we have the device. I always seem to open things upside down, so we're just gonna leave it upside down. Here's the cable that came with it, USB-C to USB type A. There's absolutely no instructions that come with it, but if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash OGS, you'll find my Odroid Go Super Guide that has a little bit of additional information and some operating systems I've checked out. Now let's take a look at the device. Compared to my other handhelds, the display size is huge. Taking a comparison here of the RG351M, you could just about fit the whole device in the size of the display. Given that I need reading glasses to see up close, this is a very welcome feature that I hope other device manufacturers consider. Here you have your L1 button, your L2 button, your power, and this is the GPIO or general purpose input and output for future devices. Your volume down and up, your headphone jack, USB-C for charging, a USB type A for a Wi-Fi adapter, and R2 and R1. On the left you have your D-pad which is slightly concave and is fairly decent, your left stick, and two buttons. On the opposite side, you have your start button, your A, B, X, Y, and another joystick on the right-hand side. And I'll probably wind up replacing these. I don't really care for them. <laughs> and then you have two additional programmable buttons down here. At the bottom middle of the device, this is the micro SD slot. While not very obvious, if you look at the top here, you will find the LEDs for your charge indicator. You've got uh, ventilation here and a speaker over here. It doesn't come with a micro SD card or any operating system, so that's what we're gonna take care of in the next step. One really good thing about this device is that you have a choice of operating systems, such as Emulet, Botocera, and now even Recallbox. Keep in mind, this is only a partial list of the available operating systems that will run on the device. If there are other operating systems you'd like to see, please comment below and let me know. We'll take a brief look at each of these operating systems, all running the same BIOS files, the same ROM files, 
and no emulator or core modifications, so you'll get a good idea of what the out-of-box experience will be most likely for you. On the OGS webpage, you'll find links to all of the different emulators that I've had a chance to check out. Clicking on it will take you to their associated website where you can click the option to download it for the Odroid Go Super. Once downloaded, we'll move on to our next step, which is to actually burn the image to the micro SD. To do that, we're going to move on over to raspberrypi.org, click on the software link, and scroll down a little bit until we see the Raspberry Pi Imager. Raspberry Pi Imager runs on multiple operating systems, including Windows, Mac, Ubuntu for x86, and of course, even the Raspberry Pi, which is very handy since a lot of my videos are on the Raspberry Pi. To do that, just type in sudo apt install rpi imager, and you can install it on a Raspberry Pi. And once done, go to accessories, imager, and go ahead and launch it. So yeah, you could actually burn and access the micro SD directly from your Raspberry Pi. Using a Pi is completely optional. Here I'm going to run it under Windows, scroll down to the bottom, and select use custom. From here, all we have to do is select the image. So I'm going to pick Emulec 4.0 and go ahead and select that by clicking open and then click choose SD card and select my micro SD card which is 128 gigabyte gigastone. From there simply click the right button and confirm that you're okay with the contents being deleted. Click yes and then it will go ahead and burn the image to the micro SD card. This process will only take a few minutes. Once the write is complete, simply click the continue button and go ahead and close out of the Raspberry Pi imager. Now we'll take the micro SD that we just imaged and go ahead and pop it into the Odroid Go Super and power it on. This is necessary because it will create a FAT32 partition to allow you to copy your files directly to the micro SD card. Upon first boot, both Recallbox and Emulec create FAT32 partitions, which allow you to easily copy your games in Windows. Botocera, on the other hand, uses the EXT4 file system, which is not readable by Windows. So for that, you'll have to use a Wi-Fi adapter, which can be quite slow for larger disk images, or you could register a copy of Disk Genius that'll allow you direct access to the micro SD. There's a coupon on the webpage below. Another option for copying your games is, of course, the Raspberry Pi 4, which can read EXT4 partitions with no problem. So if you already own a Raspberry Pi 4, this might be another faster option for you. If you're installing Recallbox or Emulec, both of those have a FAT32 partition, so you can copy your BIOS and your games directly to the micro SD card. I thought I'd go ahead and show off this new case that just came in. Uh, it was for the Switch Lite, and it's relatively solid. It's not super solid, but should do a decent job at protecting your Odroid Go Super. All right, so here we have all the systems that we're going to show here, Recall Box, Emulec, and Botocera. We'll start off with Recall Box, and we'll go ahead and plug in this Wi-Fi adapter. I might show a little bit here on the Wi-Fi connection. So we'll go ahead and plug it in and kick it off with Recall Box. The installation went super smooth and uh, just a really great experience. I'm going to quickly go through some of the menus here. You got updates, game settings, all kinds of settings under game settings. Your main menu, you got controller settings, brightness, under UI settings, themes, you can change transitions, um, go into network, we can go ahead and connect over Wi-Fi to our Wi-Fi network. It has an interesting keyboard here, so if we go into key, you can basically go through the different character sets and then scroll through and enter your passphrase for your Wi-Fi. Let's kick off the gameplay on the PlayStation playing Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. And as you can tell, the audio is not quite right. All right, let's switch over to Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo 64. Uh, not exactly playable. I'm excited about Recall Box being on this device, but uh, I think there's some more tweaks that need to be done. So let's switch over to Emulet version 4.0. And here we'll cycle through some of the systems. We'll go to Crazy Taxi on the Dreamcast. Crazy money, I 
So yeah, there's some audio distortion. The idea here is to keep everything out of the box so you can see which one is going to require the least amount of effort on your part to get set up and running. Now let's switch over to the PlayStation. We'll play Galaga Destination Earth. As you can see, it plays very well. The audio sounds great. No issues there. Now let's move on to Botocera. As you can probably guess at this point, Botocera should run well. We'll take a look though, and you'd be the judge as to just how well it runs. When you first start it up, this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and change the theme here, and we'll go ahead and select ES Theme Forever. It's a really nice looking theme, and it has the scrolling wheel on the far right. Another theme I like is ES Theme Hyper to Sarah Arcade TMC TV. It also has the scrolling wheel on the right, and the artwork is very well done, in my opinion. But one of the questions I get a lot is, can it play in television? Of course it can. <laughs> Let's check out Astro Smash. Sticking with the super retro theme, we're going to take a look at Bosconian on the main emulator. I love this game. All right, let's get a little bit more recent. Maybe not a whole lot. We'll check out SpaceX on the Daphne emulator. And now Samurai Showdown 6 on the PSP. In Japanese. And now we'll switch over to the PlayStation and play one of my favorites, Tekken 3. And as you can tell, everything is playing very smooth. As you may recall, we tried Diddy Kong Racing on Recall Box and it didn't perform so hot. Let's see how it does on Botocera. Just a few minor audio issues. The gameplay is very smooth. And now we'll check out Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. There are some clear audio issues here and there, and some general slowdown. Not uncommon on the Rock Chip 3326. It plays about as well as you can expect given the hardware limitations. I do have a few tips or cautions for you. If you attempt to update Botocera using the menu option here, I wound up having to reinstall Botocera twice because the update did not work properly. And another thing I want to show you, if you go to the themes downloader, it does show a thumbnail view of each of the themes, which is very handy. and lets you know exactly what the theme looks like before you install it. I will be trying additional operating systems other than the three that you saw here, 
If there's anything specific you'd like to see in a future video, please comment below and let me know. I'm sure those operating systems that didn't perform quite well in this video will get better in time. Please keep an eye on my OGS guide. Any additional updates or videos will be posted there. Well, that's it for another video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful, and I hope it saves you a lot of time determining what operating system to put on your Odroid Go Super. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, which I hope you do, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.